going to start off by creating a new sprite. And then down where it says animation frames, we're going to import frames from files. In Sushare Game Programming Ball Shooter, we're going to go into the Bricks folder. Here's what they look like. I'm going to start at the beginning and go to the end. You can press Control A, or you can go to the bottom and draw a box around all of them and hit Open. That should open up all of the boxes. You will need to go to frame 0 and delete that so that you don't have any blank boxes. We can close that. For the name, we'll name this Brick. The position doesn't particularly matter. I am going to double click it to make sure that the animation default speed is zero. I'll hit close. And then we're going to add a behavior. We're going to make our brick solid so that the ball will bounce off of it. Then I'm just going to put brick in the text so that I remember what that label is for. Let's go over to our event sheet. And in our event sheet, we're going to add a new group. We're going to call that brick. And we're going to add a sub event for when the ball has a collision with the brick. Now, each brick we want to have its own health. So I'm going to go to brick. I'm going to add an instance variable so the brick can have its own number. We'll call it health. And we'll say that our default brick starts with three. And we'll use that mostly for testing. And then we're going to add a global variable. And that's going to be the power of our ball. The default for that will be one. We can change that later through upgrades in the game. And every time the ball hits the brick, we want our brick to subtract from its health the value of our global variable power. So to start off with, we're going to subtract one each time a ball hits a brick. And we also want to add a sub event that if the bricks number, so we'll compare instance variable, health is less than or equal to zero, then we want the brick to be destroyed. So to test that, if we put a brick on the screen and we run it, we should be able to hit the brick three times before it breaks. And that appears to be working okay. But now we need the numbers to show up on the bricks. So let's go back to our event sheet. And we're going to create a new group called Update Bricks. And I'm going to have this not active on start. And instead, I want to update that every time I hit a brick to update it. So let's add another action system. We want to set our group active. We want start with a quotation mark, and then you can select update bricks and hit done. So this will activate update bricks. We're first going to add a blank sub event, because what we want to do is we want to destroy all of our brick labels. So go to brick label, destroy. That way we can create new ones for each one, and we don't want to have a bunch of extra ones lying around. Then we're going to add a sub-event, and that's going to be a system. And then we want to go to for each, and then we want the object to be the brick. So for every brick that exists, we want to do a few things. First, we want the brick to make a label. So that's going to be spawn another object. We want to make a brick label. We'll want that to be on its own layer. So let's hit done and hit a plus, and then we'll make a new layer called UI for user interface. So that's going to be layer two. So we'll double click this. The layer we want this to be on is layer two. The image point is the origin, so that it's going to create this right in the middle of the brick. We'll hit done. Then action, brick label, set text. We want that to be equal to the bricks. So brick dot health. So then the brick label is just going to show the number that is the brick's health. And then we're going to change the brick's animation frame. So brick, that is set frame. We want that to be equal to the brick's health. So brick dot health 
we'll divide that by 10. And that could give us a fraction. So what we're going to do is we're going to do floor and then put parentheses around brick.health divided by 10, which will make it round down. And then hit done. So here for from 0 to 9 will be on the first frame, which is this color. And then from 10 to 19 will be this color. 20 to 29 will be this color. So every 10, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on, it will be a different color. Then the last thing we want to do is add another blank sub event. And we want to deactivate this group. System set group active. And this is update bricks. And we want to deactivate it. So we don't want it to constantly be creating a bunch of labels and resetting them while the game is running. We only want it to happen when we actually hit a brick. So let's run this and see how it looks. Now since it was not active at the start, there should not be a label at the beginning, but after we hit it one time, it should change to two, then one, the next hit it'll delete. If you really want that to show up, you can right click on your group and go to edit until it's active on start. So now when we run it, it will actually show three. But that's not necessary because we're not going to start with any bricks on our layout. But we can leave it active and it'll be fine because we deactivate it as soon as it runs one time. Now we're going to allow the game to create new bricks. So on start of layout, we're going to delete all of our bricks that exist. So brick destroy. We're going to create a new group called spawn bricks. And for resetting the game purposes, we're also going to set that active. Remember, start with a quotation mark, and then choose Spawn Bricks, Activated. So in our Spawn Bricks, we're going to add a sub-event. We want that to be a system for loop. So go down to the for loop. And then the name can be whatever you want, but I'm going to call it Create Random Bricks. Make sure that is in quotation marks, whatever you put. You can just leave it blank since it says you can have an empty string. The start index is going to be 1. My end index is going to be 8 because there's going to be 8 different places where we could create a brick. And then this for loop needs to have a sub event. So right click where the green circle arrow is and add a sub event to our for loop. We want to do a system compare to values and we want to do random two if that is less than or equal to one that will give us a 50 percent chance of this happening so half the time we're going to create a brick so add an action system we're going to do create object we want to create a brick we want that to be on the game layer so that is layer one the x coordinate is going to be loop index and that is going to be one two three four five six seven or eight depending on which spot in the loop we're in times 72 because that is the width of our brick minus 36 we want to go backwards half of a brick because our bricks origin is in the center of the brick and then our y coordinate is going to be 160 so it's going to be not quite at the very top that way the ball has space to get above it, and that's also where we're going to put our text for the game in a little bit. And then hit done. And then we need the bricks to have a number. So add action brick, we're going to do set value to health. So you can set this up to whatever you want. I came up with the formula that starts off scaling slow and then scales faster as you progress. So the health, we're going to go ahead and do zero for now because we're going to need a new variable global variable. We're going to call it lines. We're going to start that at 1 and hit OK. We're going to go back to health and change that. So depending on what line number we're on, we're going to spawn our health with a different number. The formula that I came up with is floor, three parentheses, lines, times, random, 0 0.5, close parentheses, twice, plus lines times two. So depending, we're going to have a larger variance, the higher lines is, and then we're going to add lines times two. So the higher our lines get, the bigger the number we're going to add. 
And then we're going to multiply that by parentheses, lines, plus 10, close parentheses, divided by 10, close parentheses. And then that'll multiply by a scalar that's going to increase as lines increases. Make sure there's also a close parentheses after lines times 2. So it should be floor, three open parentheses, lines, times, random, open parentheses, 0 0.5, close parentheses, twice, plus lines times 2, close parentheses, times, open parentheses, lines, plus 10, close parentheses, divided by 10, close parentheses. Then under spawn bricks, I'm going to add another sub-event. This one should be blank. Add a blank sub-event so that it happens every time. This will be right after we create our random bricks. We want to system set group active we want update bricks to be activated hit done i'm going to copy and paste that and i want spawn bricks to be deactivated that way we only spawn bricks one time go back to layout our brick doesn't have to be there we can start it outside the screen if we run that, it should spawn a row of bricks at the top with random numbers. If we refresh that, it should be different spaces each time. So we refresh it, and we'll get a different setup of bricks each time we refresh. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this bottom wall. I'm going to create a new sprite. I'm going to fill this with a different color. I'm going to use red. hit close. I'm going to name the sprite ground. I'm going to set its position to 0, 0960. I'm going to set its size to 57650. And I'm going to double click it, go to origin, right click, quick assign, top left, and we can close that. Make sure I put that in the right layer, which is game, and then switch back. So next we're going to add a new group. We'll call this ball hitting ground. I'm going to put this right underneath the ball and I want that to have a sub event which is the ball having a collision with the ground. The ball hits the ground. I am going to tell the ball speed to become zero so it stops moving. That will allow me to launch it again. We want to set group active spawn bricks. So every time we get to the ground, a new row will come down. Then we'll right click on the arrow and add a sub event for a system for each. We're going to choose the brick and we want to move the brick down. So that's going to be set Y. And we want it to be itself, which is the brick dot Y plus 72. So we'll move down 72 spaces. And then if we run that, we should be able to hit some bricks. And then when it gets back down to the ground, move everything down and spawn a new row. Then we'll add some more functionality and clean up its behaviors a little bit more next time.